Do we have any um, volunteers? Looking for 14 volunteers to identify parts of speech. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Above, above the blue light. Right below the word, please. Not above it. Use the eraser. Up Okay. How about a guess on this word? <laughs> and the last one? In the first one. Yeah? In the first one. Uh-huh. First one. Never mind. There's still one left. There is. Anybody have any guesses about the, the what's left? That's not a toad. That's toad. All right. Because you were just up. Is there anything anybody wants to change? Wants to come up and change? Do you see anything that you kind of disagree with? Come on up. Shelby? Is that what you were going to change? Go ahead, you, you change it. There are two ands, by the way. Can I change the other and? Sure. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Out? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. Go ahead. Um, maybe no. Yeah. Wait. Uh oh. Okay. I just got taken care of. Um. Excellent. Was so. What was, was this correct? Yes. What do we got here? Do you agree? He says this is really a contraction of it was. Mm -hmm. What famous Christmas story do you know that begins that way? It was the night, night, night before Christmas. Christmas. The house. That's right. Yeah. This is really what word? It. it. And we know that it is a pronoun. We've got them listed on the board. The position of this pronoun in the sentence, does that make you think it's a subject pronoun or an object pronoun? A, Think um, about the position, where it is in the sentence. Oh, subject. subject pronoun. Yes, probably a subject pronoun. But it gives you some clues. It was. Is did actually occur? No. Shelby, is did actually a verb? Yes, because I looked it up in the dictionary and it said it or did was related to do. And then so I looked under do and that meant and it said that that was a verb. Right. How is it related to do? Do you remember? It's the past tense. It's the past tense. I'm going to do it. I did it. Right? Past tense. All right? So let's look and see what we've got here and see how it makes sense, even though we don't clearly, can't clearly picture the definition of some of these words, right? So is this a verb? Are we in agreement there? What kind of verb is it? Linking verb. Linking verb. How do we know it's a linking verb? Because was is in action. Yes. And the other reason we know is that we memorized a list of linking verbs, right? Yes. Is it a, it's in the first line, isn't it? Is am are was. Is am are was, right. Okay. How do we know that this is an adjective? Yes, Caleb. Um, because when it says it was blank, it was some sort of adjective. Because it was. Okay. Yes. It Describe. can, describing, probably, whatever it, right? It was. It was brilliant. So it is going back to the subject to give us more information. And it is describing. All right. Conjunction. What kind of conjunction is this? It's one of the fanboys. And what kind of conjunction is a fanboy? Go to your conjunction page. Four. Two kinds of conjunctions. Four. 
Everybody there? Yeah. Callie, what kind of conjunction is it? Coordinating. Coordinating conjunction. All right, somebody tell me about adjective the. What do you know about the? Geronimo? It's an article. It is an article. Definite or indefinite? Um, definite. Right, we have a definite thing. This is the other way we know that we've got a noun coming, too, is that the article always announces the noun. It tells you there's a noun coming. There might be adjectives in front of it, but there's a noun coming, okay? And uh, here we've got slithy as an adjective, modifying tobes, which is a noun. That makes sense. What do we know about adjectives? What do they do? What do they do, Carla? They describe nouns? They do. They modify nouns. They describe nouns. And so that makes sense that this would be a plural noun, right? Whatever a tove is, there's more than one of them, right? Okay. Did is actually a verb. We just had that discussion. And it is looking at the behavior, or it's looking at the action, gyre and gimbal. We have a compound verb here. Remember we talked about conjunctions, sometimes they join whole clauses and we get a compound sentence, but sometimes they just join two like things and we have a compound subject or a compound predicate. Here we have compound verbs. Two like things, two verbs joined with a conjunction, okay? So that's what we have here. And this is a, a verb that is an auxiliary verb kind of um, helping with us with the right tense on that. And then we get to preposition. Very nicely done. Adjective, another article. And what happens? This is announcing yes, a noun, noun, right? Yep. This article is announcing a noun. And so this must be a noun because we have an article right in front of it. So these are all clues. You know, what's really kind of exciting is that this reveals to us that the position of a word in a sentence helps us understand the job of that word in a sentence, right? Where it is, is it gives us some really big clues. In the next couple of days, we're going to start learning that in Latin, that wasn't always the case. You could have a subject and a predicate mix up, but it was what comes at the end of the word that tells you whether it's the subject or the predicate or the object. Kind of interesting. But in our language, it's position in the sentence that helps us know those things. Okay, so now let's look at this one. Can anybody, anybody brave enough to come up and identify subjects and predicates? Subject is who or what is it all about? Everybody, what part of speech is a predicate? Verb. Verb. Say it louder. Verb. verb. Predicate's always a verb. So if we know where the verbs are, we know where the predicates are. Now, we've got one subject and predicate identified. Do we have any other verbs in this sentence? There's another predicate. Mark that as a predicate. If that's our predicate, what is the subject that goes with it? Um, it. 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 Our pronoun can be a subject, right? A noun or a pronoun? Mm -hmm. So this is our subject. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, a little bit disguised, isn't it? Because we don't clearly have the word it here. But we do understand that it represents it was, twas. So there's our subject predicate, and there's a subject predicate. How about that? We have two sets. There's a clue as to the structure of the sentence. Is this going to be a simple sentence? No. Not with two sets. Not with two sets. So we're going to have to decide if it's compound complex or complex. Okay? We're going to have to do some figuring out. But first, let's look to see if there's any other important parts. In this clause, we have a subject and a predicate. And our predicate is action or linking? Action. Pretty, we're pretty sure it's action, even though we don't know exactly the action. We know it's action. So we're going to be looking for a direct object. Okay? Is there a direct object? Oh, there's just a prepositional phrase. Right? Prepositional phrase. So we don't have a direct object over here. So let's go over here. What kind of uh, predicate do we have here? Action verb or linking verb? Linking. linking verb. So we go down to linking verb and we're looking for a subject complement. That's a word that goes back and tells us more about the subject. So do we have one? 
that goes back to tell us more about the subject, a noun or an adjective? Shelby? Right. This is our subject complement. Okay? Depending on what kind of verb, it helps us know what we're looking for. Okay, so we're all set with this row. Now we move on to the third row. Does anybody recognize any phrases in the sentence? And then we get down to the bottom where we're going to try to figure out what kind of sentence this is. Yes, just like that. Do these brackets? Yes, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yes. So now we're looking at what kind of sentence this is. In order to figure out, we have to know what kind of conjunction we have. What kind of conjunction do we have? Coordinating. Between the two sets of subject predicates, the conjunction we have is this one. And what kind is it? Coordinating. Coordinating. Are you still at that page that tells you two kinds of conjunctions? Yeah. 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 All right. Find it, and then let your eye drop to the bottom of the page where you highlighted in the same color. What kind of sentence will a coordinating conjunction give you? A compound sentence. So we know that this is going to give us a compound sentence. And the structure of a compound sentence is I, standing for independent clause, comma, coordinating conjunction, I, standing for an independent clause. Here's what I want you to do now. Tell me that first independent clause. It's going to be everything up to the comma. So look at the sentence. Tell me everything up to the comma. Callie. Yeah. Twas brillig. Twas brillig. Everything up to oh. the comma. Oh, yeah. So here is our first yes. independent clause. And here is our comma. And then here is our coordinate conjunction. That's this word, right? <laughs> So that leaves everything behind there as our second independent clause. Could you just say this and leave it as an independent sentence by itself? No. no. Twas brillig. Twas brillig. Yeah. You could. You could. It's got everything it needs. Somebody read the next independent clause. Next independent clause. Quinn? Oh, I thought I had it. Everything after the coordinate conjunction. Okay. Uh, the coordinate. The, the slithy toes. Dude, what's that word? Geyer. Geyer. Geyer and gimbal in the way. Exactly. Here is our second independent clause. That is really big. And could it be a sentence by itself? Yes. 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 The slithy toes did Geyer and gimbal in the wave. Yes. Yeah. It could be. So we have two independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction. Conjunction. What's important to know here is that this is not part of this clause. It's not part of that one. It's like the glue between the two. Okay? That's a glue. It is. It's like the glue between the two. And it is your coordinating conjunction. And here's your two. And a compound sentence will always have a comma right after the first independent clause and before the coordinating conjunction. Okay? Is it interrogative? No. No. It's no. a. Is it exclamatory? No. Is it imperative? No. Or is it declarative? Declarative. It is declarative. Wait, how is it declarative? Uh, that's a really great question. How do we know it's declarative? Because there's a period. At because of the punctuation, that's a big clue to uh, what kind of sentence we have. Yes. Are you surprised at how well you did? Yes. Considering there's a lot of words in here that you don't really fully understand? I thought of more of what the stuff. Yes. And actually, you're getting better than you thought, yeah. aren't you? It feels good. It feels really good, especially with a sentence like this. I love the Jabberwocky. 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 Jabberwocky.